So when we're dealing with inequalities, we have to think about, we have to change how we think about the sentence. What this inequality here is saying is that 3x plus 4 is less than 12. That means that there are going to be any number of values for x which makes this statement true. So 3x plus 4 is less than 12. Well, I need to solve it. And the way I solve it is the same way I would solve any like linear equation by simply taking the, the plus four, setting it over the other side by subtracting four from both sides. So therefore I end up with three X is less than eight. And then I divide both sides by three. So any value that is less than 8 over 3 means that this is true. All right, so what we're looking for is we're, not, we're, lo we're looking for a series or an infinite series of answers that are true. So for example, if I say x equals 1 and I put it into that equation, 3 times 1 plus 4 is less than 12. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 is 7. Is 7 less than 12? Yes, it is. If I, what about if I put 2 in there instead? 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4 is 10. Is 10 less than 12? Yes, that is true. But if I put th x equals 3 into there, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4 is 13. 13 is not less than 12. That means the inequality is now false. So what we're looking for are true statements. All right, so there are four different symbols that we are going to have to work with in this unit. So we've got these two here. Now, what you have to remember is that the two points are opening up towards the larger of the numbers. So X is less than eight over three. If I were to swap it around, then I would be saying X is greater than eight over three, all right? So in this case here, it is the left, the left is less than the right. The left is greater than the right. So what happens though, if I add an extra line to each of these, what happens? So if I take, if I take this one here, and I put a line here, or I put a line there. What does that change the meaning to? All right. Now, someone has just said equal to. Now is that equal to instead of what it previously meant, or is it equal to in addition to what it previously meant? in addition, correct. So this is less than or equal, greater or equal. And then we have our good friend. So instead of doing equations, we're doing statements. So for example, if I wanna find, so let's, let's do some numbers here. Uh, 5x minus 3 uh, is, is less than or equal uh, to 23. What I'm looking for here are a series of numbers for which that equation is true. So, and I, again, I would solve it like I would any sort of normal equation, 
but I just have to remember that I am using an inequality symbol instead of an equal sign. I'll make that plus three make it easier on myself. Minus three from both sides, five X is less than or equal to 20. X is less than or equal to four. So can I, can I have X is one, X is two, X is three, X is three and a half, X is four and a, uh, 3.9, 3.99, 3.9999, 9, 9, 9, 9, etc. All values of X up to and including four are valid answers to the statement. All right. So what we're looking for is any possible value of X that still results in a true statement. All right. When we're dealing with normal linear equations, there is one answer. But when we're working with inequalities, we have an infinite number of answers up to and including a certain point. So what you can sometimes do with inequalities though, is you can create these, create something that looks like this. So it is X, but it's sandwiched between, two. it's part of two inequalities. If you were to write that out as an English sentence, what do we have here? X is what? So in the chat, please have a go at writing out the full sentence that goes with what I've just written there on the, on the whiteboard. <sighs> that answer is almost correct. That is correct. All right, take a very close look at what how I've written it. Yep. So first things first, let's look at this one here. X is X is greater than two. But less than or equal to seven. All right, so there are two inequalities in there that both have to be, uh, the, sorry, there's two relationships in there that have to be included. So X is greater than two, but it's less than or equal to seven. So is the number two a valid answer to that inequality? No, because it's X is greater than two. All right, so I can have 2.1 or 2.01 or 2.001 or 2.000001, etc. But I can't have two as a valid answer. I can have six, I can have 6.9, I can have 6.99, I can have 6.99999, I can have seven. They are valid answers. 7.1 is not. So where this comes in visually though, is when we have what are called number lines. So I'm gonna do a very, very poor job at trying to draw a number line using my on-screen ruler. Here 
you know, I'm trying to draw a straight line, the darn thing zooms in and out. Minus two, minus one, minus, minus one. Sorry guys, having a bit of technical difficulties here. First day back, but well, first class back for you guys. That is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> uh, okay, freehand it, never mind. Minus one, zero, one. So really dodgy number line here. Obviously not spaced out properly because my ruler doesn't want to bloody work. But we can represent, for example, this inequality up here on a number line. So what we have to do is we have to look at the types of symbols that we're using. A less, a greater than symbol, we can represent with an open circle. A less than or equal to symbol we represent with a closed circle. So we colour that in. And then of course we connect the line. So if it's less than or greater than but not equal to it's an open circle. But if it is inclusive of that number, we include it. We color it in. So what I've got there, two is greater than, or so x is greater than two, but less than seven or equal to seven, would be represented on a number line with an open circle over the two and a closed circle over the seven. Now, depending on the type of book, or the, the book or the, um, the person writing the exam, etc., sometimes they will have the symbols, like it'll be like right over the top of it. Obviously, I'm exaggerating these dots for the video here. They're obviously a lot smaller on the actual textbook but we can represent inequalities using the same thing. So, you are going to be asked to construct some number lines, but before we do that, I need to give you one more example. What if I don't have a double pronged inequality like the one that we just did? What if it is instead just all right? 
how does that read to you guys? What is the larger number? What is the larger value? Yeah. All right. So four is less than X. X is greater than four. Both are valid answers. Does that include four? No. So if I were to go onto my number line in green, am I going to use an open circle or a closed circle? I use an open circle. All right. And then which way, which direction am I going to draw the line to the left or the right? It's going to go to the right because we want or we want to include all of the values that are larger than four, but not four. So everything. Notice how there's no second dot. All right. If you're ever looking at a number line like this and there is no second dot, you assume that it's going on infinitely in either direction. So sometimes you can end up with some weird inequalities. So for example, I'm gonna do, I'll do one more here where, well actually what I'll do is I'll do, the, I'll do the opposite. I will draw the number line and you guys will do the, you guys will tell me, tell me what what it is. Uh, let's do it in. I'll oh, get rid of get rid of that too. What is that if you were to write it using symbols? If you were to write it using symbol notation, which is what we've been doing before with the little, you know, the, the open, what does that look like? What would that look like if you were to type it out? Just a reminder, you can find the less than, down. doing less than or equal to, you can't really do on your keyboard straight away. Uh, you'll have to find the, find the button for it. I'll find the shortcut code for it. But your comma and full stop buttons, if you shift, you can press and do those buttons that way. Or you can write it in the chat as a sentence, please. Can there be something that <laughs> you're 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 on the right track? Uh, it's not less x x is greater than six, but it's also equal to six. Uh, two is less than x. No, x is less than two. All right, you actually need to create two statements. Because so we first things first we know that we know that x 
is less than two, but we also know that x is greater than or equal to six. <laughs> that makes no sense because that's implying that X is both at the same time. All right. I would not do it like that. Because you're logically saying that two is greater than six. I would do it as two separate statements. All right, and that might come up in the textbook. <coughs> One more example that I'm gonna set you off to work. Um, whoever is doing the GAT tomorrow, you have a quick assembly at 3.10 today. Check your emails. Yeah. I'm nearly finished anyway. I got one. I'm doing this one more example in green, and then I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you off. All right. What's the inequality that goes with the green? The green set. You only do the GAT if you are doing a 3-4 subject. So in green, what's that inequality coming out as? X is greater than or equal to zero. That is true, but it's also a, it's a two-parter. To write it properly, yep. Now put them both together in one statement. All right, you're gonna to need to reverse one of those symbols. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like a winking emoji, <laughs> but yes. All right, no, that's fine. No, I, I but I, I, I know what you mean, so. In green, yeah, so it's zero is less than or equal to X, which is less than eight. So not including eight, but it's any number between zero, including zero and eight, but not eight. All right. Um, Heather, do you want to try and explain where you got those symbols from? You can insert them in Microsoft Word, I believe, and then just copy them over. How did you, where did you get the symbols from? <laughs> 